Good day, everybody, and welcome to a lore lesson on Saradamon as he relates to real-life religions and mythology. In this video, I want to explore the inspirations of our world that Jagex may have had when designing the character and history of Saradamon from very obvious sources like God of Judeo-Christian religions to other real-life mythology that Jagex may or may not have had in mind when creating Saradamon. I want to mention quickly, by the way, before we get started, that this, well, might be obvious, but there are going to be some spoilers in this video for quests having to do with Saradamon, uh, where he's particularly influential. At this point, I'm not sure if you can call anything in RuneScape quests spoilers anymore, but there you go. That's the obligatory spoiler alert. Anyway, one of the best aspects of RuneScape's lore, in my opinion, is that none of the deities, beings, or characters in general are totally copy-pasted from real mythology or other fantasy stories. Uh, personalities and histories are very distinct and unique to RuneScape's universe, and my goal here is really to just point out parallels to mythology in our history that you may or not already be familiar with. Let's start with a crash course on Saradamon's history and origins in RuneScape. In present day, Saradamon is known as the god with the most followers on Gilinor, uh, with churches, monasteries, and temples spread all throughout the major regions like Mistalin and Kandarin. By the way, I think I say this in every video, but pronunciations are so crazy varied with all these runescape terms that whatever, sorry if I butcher any. Anywho. Saradomon is known as the oldest god that ascended as a mortal uh, roughly 10,000 years ago in the game world. He was a human, and his homeworld is called Terragard. His ascension to godhood is not precisely detailed anywhere uh, that I could find, but the general idea is that he was a justiciar on Terragard. At some point in his work, he was exploring some caves or something, and came across an elder artifact known as the Locator. This alone did not grant him godhood, but he was able to use a locator to, astoundingly, locate other elder artifacts that are not specifically named anywhere I could find. Um, but anyways, through continued exposure to the other elder artifacts, he did finally attain godhood. One of the first large-scale impacts this had on the immediate world is that Saradomen, or Saradomen, Saradomen, yeah, whatever pronunciation, um, he was able to unify the various states, or governments, uh, whatever they were, of Terragard. He appointed 12 magisters to essentially rule over the planet, and then he went off to explore and conquer other worlds. Unrelated, but fun fact, uh, one of the magisters is named Oreb, who you fight as a mini-boss in the Elite Dungeon 3, Shadow Reef, and also as the magister in the Sofanim Dungeon with level 115 Slayer, or um, in the new... Well, as of this recording, the newest quest, Succession. He is also uh, the master of the Nomad, who the Nomad frequently mentions and tried to kill. Anyway, back to Saradomen. One of the first new worlds Saradomen impacted was that of the Naragi, which will sound familiar to anyone who paid any attention during Sixth Age quests. The long story short here is that Saradomen's arrival to the civilization was unfortunate. Um, yeah, overall, pretty unfortunate, as it resulted in Saradomen decimating a large part of its cities when the Naragi refused to worship him. And not long afterwards, the decimation of the whole planet and all its people, when one of the oldest known god wars broke out. Saradomen and the god Tuska used the Naragi planet as a battleground, and somewhere along the line, the god Skagaroth entered the scene and everything got even worse. In the end, only one Naragi survived. Guthix. In a series of events most players are familiar with, Guthix attained godhood himself and wandered the universe for thousands of years before arriving on Gilinor. Anyway, eventually Saradomen happened upon the Icene homeworld and established a large following there, and then found Gilinor. Let's pause here on Saradomen's history because from here I could go on for a while through the first god wars on Gilinor involving Zaros, Bandos, Ar Armadil, and eventually Zamorak, all the way through present day RuneScape events. This point in Saradamon's story is interesting to me because it's got foundations that parallel different real-life religions and mythologies. Although we don't have specific detail about this, uh, his reign on Terragard as a god, many of us already have an image in our head that Saradomen is, well, god, as in the Judeo-Christian god. In Judaism, he's often called Yahweh, in Islam he's called Allah. If you didn't already know, all these religions refer to the same god. Uh, before the different religions broke out, as described in the Old Testament. Uh, specifically though, Saradamon's reign 
and following have very specific traits of Christian churches in that his followers worship in churches and chapels, monasteries and abbeys and such. The hierarchy in Sarah Dominus societies is also made up of priests, monks, nuns, knights, and other roles that echo Catholic and other Christian churches throughout history. Its symbol, the Sarah Dominus star too, is also very symbol to Christian crosses. On the surface, there are elements of an Old Testament God in Saradamon, but something is different. Many people imagine God in the Old Testament as often wrathful, especially when compared to God described in the New Testament. And the Old Testament God has certainly been known to wipe out entire cities, as, is, uh, as in the story of Sodom and Gomorrah, or even the whole world, uh, as in the story of Noah's Ark and the Flood. A hint of this comes out in the story of Saradamon wiping out a Naragi city, Additionally, Sarah Doman appointing 12 magisters on Tarakard is interesting as 12 is a very biblical number. The Old Testament describes the 12 tribes forming from each of Abraham's sons. But the Judeo-Christian god, wrathful as he may be, never is depicted wiping out entire populations on the basis of insolence or refusal to submit or just pure rage. There is always an undertone of that humanity has gone so astray that God had to um, course correct for humanity to start fresh. The case of the Naragi just refusing to accept this foreign entity as their new god doesn't quite fit in the same box. If anything to me, this is an extrapolation of what happens when an entity that was mortal acquires godhood but is still subject to mortal qualities like rage outbursts and feeling entitled to dominance over civilization because you're more powerful than all their people combined. Anyway, this raises an interesting point that Sarah Domen shows many Judeo-Christian God qualities, but as someone who is very much human, this part doesn't really parallel the God that we learn about today. God is never person personified, really, or depicted fully embodying a mortal form. There is an obvious exception, of course, in the form of Jesus for Christians, but Jesus' behavior and whole life path is very different than the world-conquering Sarah Domen. Furthermore, in Christian teachings, Jesus is not, um, he's not an ascended mortal who reached godhood because of magical artifacts. <laughs> at, the, um, at the Jesuit Catholic high school that I went to, for example, they teach that Jesus was born 100% God and 100% human. Confusing concept, potentially, but the point is he was always God from the start, so it's not really comparable to Sarah Dimon's story, which is more one of ascension. I want to branch off from the concept of God now to a different God entity of another ancient religion that is actually depicted more humanly and with more human tendencies. This is none other than Zeus of Greek mythology, also recognized as Jupiter in the pretty much equivalent Roman mythology. Zeus is similarly depicted as an old man with a white beard uh, deity, but of course in Greek mythology he is the big boss god of a whole pantheon of gods, many of whom are his offspring, as opposed to a you know, being the one and only god. He is called a god of thunder as well, which parallels Saradomen in that he is also closely associated with lightning as his go-to form of magic. Uh, this is seen in gameplay with the uh, Saradomen staff's Saradomen strike spell slash special attack and the Saradomen sword special attack. Also, the number 12 has some significance to Zeus as well. In Greek mythology, the 12 zodiac signs are watched over by Zeus's children, uh, the other well-known Greek gods such as Athena and Ares and the rest of them. Anyways, there is not much else that is similar between Zeus and Saradamon, really. Uh, however, there are excessively clear parallels between the Iceian society, uh, Saradamon's strongest followers, and ancient Greek society. I'll get into that in a moment, but as far as the comparison to Zeus is concerned, when you really dig into mythology, their uh, lifestyle choices are quite different. Zeus's most famous stories have to do with ridiculous sexual deviance that result in sexual misadventures with the most beautiful women, women in all the land and resulting in several offspring slash demigods. Sarah Doman is only known to have one daughter, Adrasteia, <laughs> and her origins are not really known as far as I'm aware. It is worth noting though that in Greek mythology, Adrasteia is a nymph who was charged with nurturing the infant Zeus. Additionally, she first introduces herself in RuneScape quest lines as Hebe, which is the wife of Hercules. 
Anyway, about the Iceni, their society and language is heavily ancient Greek based. This is especially noticed when you train archaeology in RuneScape and go through the Everlight dig site, as you will see references to Olympic Games, Greek theater, and many titles, especially military pop-up, as in titles for people. Uh, also, Iceni people have a very angel-like appearance and presence, as they're associated with light and have large white feathered wings. Uh, they're associated with hallowed things because where they come from is literally called Hallow or Hallow Vale on Gilinor as it was before. The warriors especially parallel our famous archangels, uh, actually. Commander Ziliana is effectively a female archangel Michael, wielding sword and shield and striking down evil and darkness with light as top generals of their respective people. I realized only now actually that uh, I'm talking about Greek mythology but I just... Uh, related Ziliana to the Archangels, which is Christianity. Didn't really think about it, but it's just another parallel that's interesting that I thought that came to mind. Um, although it is related because Greece actually did begin to convert as a whole to Christianity shortly following Jesus' death. Uh, so in this way, Saradomen does embody both a Zeus and Judeo-Christian god figure for the Iceni. So these are the most substantial real-life religions and mythological associations I can think of as inspirations or parallels to Saradomen. I wish I could find more info on the God Wars, actually, between um, Saradomen's lands and the Zaroshian Empire, because uh, the Empire of Zaros is very clearly based on the ancient Roman Empire. Um, that's a video for another time, and maybe there is specific lore on this somewhere that I'm missing, but I would love to draw parallels between that and the real-life history we know about between the ancient Roman and Greek empires, especially at war. Now, regarding Saradomen, where does all this leave us with him? Who is he, or what is his equivalent in terms of real-life mythology? Saradomen's ultimate goals and ideals are very Judeo-Christian, godlike, peace and justice for all. He wants to unify people under peace, like he supposedly managed 10,000 years ago on Terragard before he went off to um, unify other lands. In my opinion, Saradomen is a thought experiment of what would happen if a devout Christian managed to achieve godhood. Because Saradomen is close in many ways to an equivalent of God in the RuneScape universe, but is extremely fallible and flawed as well because of his very human nature that did not disappear once he attained godhood. I say devout Christian specifically because the way his following expands and develops most closely matches Christian nations. It wouldn't really make sense to say he parallels Allah in Islam or Yahweh in Judaism, as the customs and hierarchy of his followers much too closely match those of Christian European nations in history. Plus, al Qurid is already the obvious parallel to Arabic nations, and they don't have much to do with Saradomen. Similarly to Christian nations in real history that spread their empires proclaiming peace and justice for the world, Saradomen's followers paved the way for plenty of war and bloodshed and chaos in the world, as things shifted from peace and justice for all to we must crush our pagan and unholy enemies to eliminate evil from the world and make room for peace and justice in the world. Um, it's a whole other subject matter and definitely a different type of video to go over opinions on Christianity's influence on war and peace in the world throughout history. But Sarah Doman does touch on it from a perspective that is not really possible in our world. He can be seen basically as a human king of the Crusaders who wants peace and justice in the world, but much like a human gets derailed in side quests for power by pursuing and even waging war for elder artifacts, including the Stone of Jazz on Gilinor. Equally, uh, going back to Greek mythology, Sarah Doman follows one important pattern of much of the Greek pantheon of the gods, called Apotheosis. This is a word lots of RPG gamers have probably heard in various epic quest lines in other games, and what it actually means is ascension to godhood, specifically used in Greek mythology. Several famous Greek deities, including Dionysus and Asclepius in some stories, have origin stories as mortals who ascended to godhood in this way. This narrative is closer to anything in the Judeo-Christian teachings because Greek gods ascended or not, are constantly intertwined in mortal affairs and very present in humans' lives. Uh, there are some kings, queens, and other royalty in Greek mythology that were ascended in stories. Some examples are Helen of Troy and King Minos of the Minotaur stories. He was appointed a judge of the dead in the underworld, apparently. 
There are also common folk level humans who underwent apotheosis. In some stories, Dionysus, for example, uh, the god most associated with wine and some mischief, is um, in some stories the son of Zeus, but in others was born of mortals and then ascended. I may have missed something, but in all the Greek or any other culture's pantheon of gods really that I'm aware of, I haven't seen a case quite similar to Ceridomen in terms of ascension, and more specifically, the, um, the ascended deities and what they were up to after their ascensions is the easiest way to put it. Most ascension stories from worlds cultures do see ascended mortals still involved in the mortal world, but not quite to the extent of Ceridomen or other deities in RuneScape. Um, the King Minos example is a good one because in my research through Greek mythology, um, there are a few like judges of the underworld, but these are mortals who are ascended and then like sent to the underworld or ascended and then sent elsewhere by other gods. Ceridomen's not quite like that. He just kind of ascended himself through some artifacts and then decided he's going to stick around and uh, do his thing. <laughs> Long story very short. To wrap it up, I see Ceridomen as what would happen if a human of medieval era Christian nation attained godhood, or perhaps an ancient Greek in one of our world's most significant eras of expanding empires. There would surely be a pursuit of their vision for a paradise on earth with plenty of war along the way and a handful of side quests for further sources of power because humans just tend towards that when given a taste or burst of power. It's been really interesting for me putting this video together and researching because I realized that there isn't any common mythology I've come across involving a mortal who comes into so much power and decides to reshape entire civilizations or entire worlds as a result. I guess in our case it would just be entire civilizations because we don't talk about other worlds <laughs> in real life, but this to me makes Saradim and that much more interesting of a thought experiment. Okay, that's all I've got. Um, if you've made it this far, thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you're researched or learned at all in this kind of history and mythology, uh, leave comments with your thoughts on this and any possibly related mythologies I might have missed. This is interesting and very fun for me, but my educational background is definitely not in those areas. So I would really like to know if there are interesting uh, things to mention here that I totally missed. Please consider liking and subscribing if you enjoyed this content. I know it's not your typical RuneScape video, uh, but I do plan on making more mythology parallel videos for various RuneScape deities and lore, so please let me know in the comments also if there are any you're particularly interested in. Thanks everybody, catch you in the next one.